guys. Uh, welcome to the the uh, charcoal lesson today, the beginner's charcoal. Um, I just thought I'd offer this as a once-off thing as well. I'm not going to do it on a regular basis, just to try and get you guys that haven't really worked with charcoal before. Just sort of, not, you know, because it's quite panicky when I'm busy um, showing you stuff on screen and you've got this really hectic picture to look at and you're not quite sure how this stuff actually works on the paper. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's all well for me to explain to you, okay, this is how it works and this is how it should be working. But unless you actually get a little bit of practice in, um, and you actually, well, that's actually the biggest thing is you actually really need to practice the different techniques um, just on simpler forms. Let's put it that way. When you're not under so much pressure when you're actually busy doing the class, you know, if I'm, when I'm doing the, the other charcoal classes. So, so if you can, have, if you do get a bit of time to actually sort of just practice a little bit, um, that will help a lot. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to first start off with the basics. The most essential part, obviously, is your paper. Okay, so um, most likely you do have the right paper to work with. But you do get a variety of papers that you can actually work with. So you can either work with your, this is a smoother sort of paper. So it is specifically for charcoal, but you can also use pen and ink and pastel on it as well. And it's got a very really slight texture to it. Okay, not too much of a texture, but enough to actually grip the, the charcoal. You cannot work on a cartridge paper. The cartridge paper is very, very smooth. You know, your fax paper. Um, obviously, you can draw on it but it's not going to really grip the charcoal very well. And you'll find, especially when it comes to the willow charcoal, um, it tends to sort of go on and then, and then come off very, very quickly. All right. And then even if you spray it, um, it doesn't really work that well. Okay. So you can use, you could use your, um, that charcoal, uh, your charcoal pencils um, for that, because that's got that um, gum arabic in it. All right. So that's your, your slightly smoother one. Then you get your slightly textured paper. So that's more what we call the intermediate paper. And I'll show you exactly what the difference is when, you, when you're when busy putting your charcoal on. So in the corner over here. So this is my, my smoother charcoal. Okay, so that's your smoother charcoal. And I'm just going to use the side of it for the moment just to show you. So you see it has got a little bit of texture. It is gripping it. It's not, it's not going too, um, too smooth. If I actually had to get a piece of... I'm just going to actually show you just on fax paper. Okay, so that's your fax paper. So there's your fax paper. You can see it immediately goes very smooth. Can you see there? It's not as grippy as, as that one, which has got a little bit of a texture. Okay, and that's what I mean by it doesn't have much texture for the for the charcoal to grip onto. Okay. Um, then you get your intermediate paper. So this is now intermediate, and you can see that's got a much rougher texture than this one. Okay, so that's your... your um, slightly intermediate and then you also get a very rough one as well and that will be more of your watercolor paper that you work on that will give you even a rougher texture okay so you would work between these two some people prefer this one and some people prefer that one but i'm going to show you what um with each particular one what effect it has when you put your charcoal on there okay um the other charcoal paper you can use is uh, what we call pastel paper so your pastel paper is the one that you buy normally in colors, okay? Um, and then we do sometimes work with a with a slightly colored background, but then when you want to bring in highlights, then you have to use white charcoal to bring in your highlights. Okay, so I will send you some examples of that. Um, I have got some pastel paper here, so let me just grab a piece. I just want to show you. Um, so you can get different colors, uh, I mean, quite a variety of colors. So this is your pastel paper, and you'll often see that your Canson make it. Normally it's Canson that make it. It's one of the most popular ones. Um, but you can see you get in different colors, and you obviously get them in lighter colors as well. Okay. And then when you buy this paper, you get that one surface is slightly coarser, and then the other side is actually slightly smoother. So you actually have get, you get two surfaces that you can choose from. All right. So this one's much smoother, and then this one has got a slightly coarser side. Okay. So those you can buy separately, you can buy them in big sheets as well. So when I did work with pastels, then that's what I would work with. I would actually work with a pastel paper um, because on the whole, then I would be either doing um, portraits or um, 
landscapes. And if you're actually working in color with pastels, um, it's preferable to have some sort of color background to work on top of. And you don't want to work with white, not really. It's a bit like canvas, actually, in a way. You know, we color our canvases before we paint. Okay. Right, so those are your papers that you get. Okay. So then um, your different charcoal. So you get your willow charcoal. So those are the six that you were using the first time around. Um, you do get them in a variety of sizes. So you get them, this is a, a sorted pack. So this has actually got big, thick ones and it's got small, thin ones as well. This is um, what we call poplar, this one. Uh, it's an ash red. But you get that worldwide. Um, so this one is made literally from poplars. Then you get your vine charcoal and you also get your willow charcoal as well. We just sort of call it willow charcoal because it's the most common name for it, but it doesn't necessarily mean it is made from willow. Okay, then you also get your charcoal pencils, so your solid charcoal pencil. All right, so okay, this one is broken. <laughs> this one is literally a solid pencil on its own. Um, and it's just got a slight sort of plasticky stuff that they've put around it um, where they can actually write the name on. This is how you'll get it. Obviously, it keeps your fingers a little bit cleaner as well. Um, and you get different ones. You get hard, soft, medium. And in some makes, it'll actually give you a 2B and a 6B, etc. as well. But on the whole, you'll see it'll be mostly soft, medium, and hard. Um, these now are... Your willow charcoal, it's been taken and then they've added like a gum arabic to it. And that's just to, to compress it. So that's what we call compressed charcoal as well. That's the other name for it. And th this one is the more gum arabic you've added to it, the harder it actually becomes. Okay. Um, and once you put it onto your paper, A, it is a lot darker than your willow charcoal, as you can see there. Okay. And the other thing with this one is you can actually blend it, but it doesn't blend as well as your willow charcoal. And once you've once you put it on, you can't really get it off. Okay, so I'm going to show you here with the willow charcoal. Here's your willow charcoal, and then that's your that charcoal. And you can actually see the difference between the two there. So if I want to blend this now, I'm just going to use a tissue. Okay, so that's your willow charcoal. So when I blend the willow charcoal, it will take a fair amount of the charcoal off. Okay. If I blend the compressed charcoal, you can see some of that mark actually stays behind. So it does come off to a certain point, but it won't it won't blend as nicely as that one. It won't be as such a smooth a blend because what happens is that gum arabic that's in it actually sort of sticks onto the the paper. So I'm just going to onto those little things. I'm just going to bring it closer so you can see there. So you can see the difference between the, the difference there. Um, and you're going to notice as well if I try and erase it. So I'm just going to use my hard eraser here. So if I erase this, you can take off quite a bit of your willow charcoal. Okay. It won't come off completely though. Hey? All right. So that's another thing to remember. I'll explain that just now. And then this one you can see as well. It doesn't come off as well. You can, it, it leaves, definitely leaves a darker mark. So this one, you can take off most of it. That one, you won't be able to take off as much. Okay. Um, look, it also depends on your paper as well. Your compressed charcoal, you also get it in a stick form as well. Not a stick form, in another pastel form. Just one other piece here. Disappeared. Oh, here it is. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I just want to find my little squared piece. I think it's just, oh, here it is. It looks just like the willow charcoal. That's why I can't find it. Okay, so this is also compressed charcoal. This one has also got the gum Arabic in it as well. And it will also go a lot blacker as well. So it's actually weird. This has got a slightly brownish tinge to it. So check how black that is. Okay. So this is a softer one. That other one I was using with the pencils medium. This is actually soft. All right. So it's not willow charcoal. It's also your, um, your charcoal. So when you really want to, really want to make it black, then you can do that as well. So that gives you a very nice black, black, black piece there. 
And what I normally do is we only add this right at the end when <clears throat> there is a section that you want to make particularly dark. Okay. So that you can see there again. It's not only <coughs> come off to <coughs> sorry guys. <coughs> Apologies. <coughs> <clears throat> all right yeah but as you can see there it won't come off that much either okay so those are your basic types of charcoal then to fix your charcoal to your paper <clears throat> unless you're going to put it behind glass it's always a good idea to actually spray it so you get your fixative what you call an artist fixative the artist fixative um, can be used for pastel and that sort of thing. We don't, I don't normally use it on pastel because it does make it go much darker. It tends to push it sort of back into the page. So in particular with pastels, I very, really, really actually um, do my fixative. Um, it, it sort of changes the whole picture and then it's sort of almost gone. Not gone, but it's, um, I tend to rather just put it behind glass. I don't actually fix it at all. But it, it actually does stay on the paper. As long as you're working with a corset paper, not a smooth paper, it will stay. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so this is a good thing. You don't have to buy the very expensive ones. You get like tins that are ridiculously expensive. As long as you've just got a, a good name sort of brand. Um, in South Africa here, yeah, like this one is, is quite a big tin. You get the smaller tins as well. This can vary between about 70 Rand and upwards, basically. Um, and you put about two layers of, of fixative on there. And then you can actually roll up your picture and store it, and you don't have to worry about it smudging. The other thing you can do as well, um, you can spray your picture, and you can work back over it again. But obviously, once you spray it, you're not going to be able to erase anything. So it's quite easy if you don't want to lose what you already have by leaning on it or something like that, um, and then there's maybe a section that you want to make a bit darker, then you can go and spray this in between. You also get what we call a workable fixative, um, but I must be honest, I think it's a bit of a money-making racket um, it, where they say you can work over it, but you can actually work over this one as well. So that, uh, as I said, I think that is probably more for the pastel market. Um, yeah. Okay, and then you also get your little packs as well. So this is a Krita color pack. I just want to show you what the other pencils look like. Just, I haven't actually even opened this one, so it's actually quite a nice surprise. So this comes in a tin, quite a nice little tin, Krita color, also a good make. You obviously get your very cheap makes of charcoal as well. Um, you can even make your own charcoal, which we have done um, during the lockdown when we couldn't get our art supplies. Some of the students stuff, Brenda, she actually made her own charcoal, which was quite cool. Okay, so here we've we've got a nice sort of selection of, of charcoal. Um, so they've, get, they've put a few pieces of willow charcoal in here. And you've got your needle eraser. You've got a big black piece of, of charcoal as well. And this is where I was talking about you've got your charcoal. So this one's like a soft and a medium, and then you get a hard. Okay. Now, these ones actually come in a pencil form. So this is like your normal pencil that you get. Let me just get it out quickly. And not in the solid form that we saw just now. Okay. So this one is in a pencil form, um, and then obviously you have to sharpen it. The only thing of these is I find if you do drop these at any stage, or actually any, any of your charcoal, so if you drop these ones as well, as you can see, it has been dropped, it'll literally break into pieces, okay? So what you need to do is um, if, it does, if it does drop and you break into a piece like this, you must maybe just put a piece of uh, paper on there because your medium will be written at the end, and then you're going to pick this up in future and not know if it's a medium, a soft, or a hard. Okay, so if it ever does drop, try not to drop them. <laughs> okay. Um, but I have gone more to this sort of charcoal because with this one, what happens is if you if I drop this now on a on a hard floor, it shatters inside. Okay. Um, 
it's it's more so than your normal pencils that you buy. And when you're actually sharpening it, what happens is um, as you sharpen it, it basically just turns into sort of like uh, dust and, and you can't get a sharp point. Okay, so I prefer personally to buy these. Also, you're almost getting more for your money because the whole thing is actually charcoal, which is great. Okay, so those are your charcoal pencils. And then this is the... They've also given me a... This one, this Creative Color one. It says it's a charcoal, but for me it looks more like a pencil. Okay. Um, it's got a lot of graphite in it, actually. So it's not so much the charcoal. I don't know why they put it in the charcoal box, but apparently, yeah, it just comes with the, with the box. Okay. Right, so those are your main piece, main uh, different types of charcoal that you can get. You obviously can also buy black pastel as well. Black pastel is basically just uh, black charcoal that's been also just had with the gum arabic in it as well. But you can also use that too. Sharon? That yeah. The white stick that was in that set of yours. I've got one of those. Yes. And it's the blending stump, yeah. Oh, is that's that right. Thank you. That's right. Yeah, that's it. So that's your blending stump. Okay, so these are the different tools that we use. And what I've done is, as I've worked with charcoal over the years, I've sort of um, added a few extra ones, etc. Okay, so... Right, so that's what you, so that one actually came specifically with a blending stump. So that's one, a, a very handy thing to have when you're busy blending, okay? What's nice about the blending stump is it gives you a lot of control because it's got quite a sharp point. Okay, so when you're going into smaller areas, um, that's basically when I use the blending stump in the smaller areas. Or if you really want to push your charcoal really into your paper. Okay, so you get that one. Then you get your normal tissue. So I use a normal tissue as well. Also nice and soft. That's for your obviously your bigger areas that you want to you want to to blend. Um, I don't use kitchen paper because you know the roller towel. It's too coarse. It's very hard. It, it takes a lot of your charcoal off. So you've got to be very very careful with it. All right. So I don't use kitchen paper at all. Um, I just use your normal tissue. Then the other thing that we you've seen before is the paintbrush. So that's a soft paintbrush, it's a synthetic, a synthetic paintbrush. So a synthetic paintbrush is used for when you're adding charcoal dust onto your paper. Also, you can use it to do some blending as well. But we're gonna we're gonna explore all of these just now. And um, what was the other thing? Oh yes, and then you also have your earbud, okay, cotton bud. Um, what's nice is if you buy the makeup ones, the makeup ones um, come with a little sharp point on the one side and then a round point on the other. Um, so the sharp point can actually almost act like a blending stump, which is also quite handy as well. And these are just all tools that you can keep handy. They're, they're coming very useful and you'll probably use most of them in your pictures, depending on obviously what you're busy drawing. Um, I tell you, your blending stumps also come in different sizes. So you get your very big blending stumps, and then you get your. So this is a tool. This is a very really old blending stump. <laughs> so when it gets to that stage, <laughs> it's quite old. Um, the way you can clean your blending stumps is you can actually just take some sandpaper, um, and sometimes you'll actually get um, charcoal kits that come with a little block of sandpaper um, or like little sheets of sandpaper. And then all you do is you basically take your blending stump and you will just rub it onto the paper and then you can get your point back and it'll clean it as well. Because obviously I have there is charcoal on here. So if I put it onto my page, it's going to actually put charcoal on. Um, and you may actually want a clean blending stump when you're busy with it. Okay, so those are all of my blending tools. Oh yes, last one. So this is the other one that I made. I don't know if you guys have managed to make one. So this is the cotton wool ball that I put in a piece of t-shirt material, okay? Um, and I just took some elastic and I, I tied it at the top. This is wonderful for, for doing big sections of blending if you're doing clouds and that sort of thing as well. For We dip this into the charcoal dust that we've, we've made and um, and then we can do big sections for, for clouds and that sort of thing. All right. So those are sort of all the blending tools that I use. Um, okay. With regards to your charcoal dust, 
you can buy charcoal dust on its own. You can buy it in a big in a big thing. So that's obviously been very very finely ground. It could be very very nice and smooth. Uh, quite expensive though, obviously. So I just tend to make my own charcoal dust. All I do is I just take my teeny tiny little bits of charcoal that I can't really use. So say I've gotten a piece that's left over like that. Um, just remember you must only use willow charcoal for this. You mustn't use your um, the compressed charcoal at all. All right. So you use the willow charcoal for this. Then I would take those pieces and then I just basically put them all together. I actually normally just put them in here in the meantime. And then what I'll do is I'll take them out and then I'll just crush them with whatever you have handy. And just put it back into your little bowl. And I've got a little thing of charcoal dust. That's also great for some of the techniques that we're going to learn today. Okay, then you will be razors. Right, so obviously the most common razor to use with charcoal is your needle eraser. This is your, um, just be careful when you buy them. Sometimes when you buy them, they have been in, in either a container too long or um, their stock has been sitting there for too long. And it can actually go very, very hard. Um, and then you, you can't knead it. When you do get it, you must be able to knead it like some press stick. Okay. The kneading part is also how you clean it. So once you've got to a stage where it's gotten so full of charcoal, you've been raising quite a lot, basically just go back into it. It basically self-cleans. Okay, so, um, and believe me, it actually lasts a long time. Um, it, it won't really lose its, its um, erasability, let's put it that way. And what's nice about this is you can make a nice thin point, make a nice little sharp point to work with to erase certain sections, very fine lines. But because it is soft, obviously, you can't press very hard with it um, when you've got a little thin point like that. That's why we use the hardy razors as well. And, of course, then you can do it into a ball as well, and you can erase with that as well, just using very softly. You can actually erase quite softly with your little eraser. The other eraser I use is um, one of these favorite pastel ones. They come in all different colors and shapes, etc. It's a very hard eraser, and this is the one that I cut into pieces. So you can buy a normal hard eraser as well. This one has just got a little bit slightly, slightly harder. Um, <clears throat> and this is nice for getting your sharp little lines when you're doing grass and that sort of thing as well. So I'll do that a bit later. And then you get your old-fashioned erasers. These are also, this is also quite hard. It's also favorite Castell. This is the one that you used to use in school. Okay, well. Some of you won't know this one, but anyway, <laughs> some of them are used. Uh, this has got a, a very rough um, surface. It's for, it was for actually uh, taking off ink off your paper. So if you made a mistake when you wrote with a pen, we didn't have to fix them. Okay, so when I was in school, we didn't have to fix yet. So it was the only way you could get rid of something or you had to rewrite it out over again. It was only later on when I went high school, we actually started getting to fix Okay, um, this is my, this is actually charcoal I made in the bride. I just use sushi sticks because that's all we had available at that stage. But you can actually use, if you've got a willow tree or something, you can actually do it. These are actually, these ones are literally made in the bride. One is a sushi stick and that was actually a society stick, which gives me a nice small little piece to work with. Um, actually quite nice. It actually works quite well for, for, for smaller sections. It doesn't work as well as the normal charcoal though, I must be honest. It's not really the right consistency, but um, out of desperation, sometimes that's one, what one has to use. And your last eraser that you get, which is also very, very nice, especially when you're getting into smaller sections, is your pencil eraser. Okay, so this one is literally a pencil form where you just sharpen it and you can make a nice sharp point. Very nice also for... Um, erasing smaller sections of your picture. You also get um, you get like a, a razor that sort of comes in like a click form and you get different size of hard erasers. So it comes in like a little square little tip. I don't have an example of that unfortunately. Um, one of my students has got them. I'll actually find a picture on her WhatsApp and I'll send it to you guys. So you can literally buy them in different sizes. Okay, so little pens, and different, but they are quite expensive. But you don't really need those. It's not really absolutely necessary to have those. Okay, any questions yet?
Um, no, thanks, Sharon. Cool so far. Okay, good. Okay. So what we're going to first learn is the way each of these things actually works on your paper. All right, so what I want you to do is we're just going to work with a willow charcoal initially. Um, I want you to take your willow charcoal and I just want you to make a square like that, just as it is. And then you make another one next to it. And a third one. Okay, so I want you to make it quite black, you know, so rub your willow charcoal into your squares. And remember, if you are sitting down and your paper is flat, then obviously just blow your paper every now and again. Um, because I am working standing up, it does help because the charcoal tends to just fall down the whole time. But um, you don't want to have charcoal lying around all over your paper. The other thing is when you are working with your charcoal and say you've worked on a whole section or whatever and you need to go back into another section, but you need to bring in your finer details um, and you don't want to spray it yet, then what you would do is you would just use preferably flax paper. You don't want to use paper that is any coarser that has got any texture on it. So you can use a bit of flax paper or even tracing paper if you want to. And um, you would then lean that on the section that you don't want to destroy now that you just put all the hard work into. You would lean on that now. Just put it down carefully, lean on it, and then work in your section. I guess I always have a piece of this handy as well. Okay. Right, so you should all have three squares there, and you can write this down on your squares, and then you can spray this afterwards, or you can just put it in a, if you don't have any uh, fixative in the meantime, what you can do is just put your page into a folder, you know, into a plastic folder. No, it won't, it won't sort of smudge, and you can just keep it as a reference, but oh, you shouldn't need to. I'm sure you're going to remember all of this. Okay, now I'm just going to divide it into three like that. Yeah, so just draw a line across like that. Okay, so first thing, we're going to use our finger first. All right, so you can use your fingers. It's not a no-no. The only thing is if you are going to use your fingers, especially now in winter, um, your hands can have cream and stuff on it, okay? Um, and if you've got cream in your hands or any sort of gel or whatever it is, uh, it can actually affect the way your charcoal reacts onto your page. So always make sure if you are going to be using your hands, rather just give your hands a good wash, make sure they've got nothing on them. And then you can use your fingers with absolute pleasure. At least with willow charcoal, it does come off very easily. It does wash off quite easily. It just does make your hands it's very dry, so that's the only problem now. So in summer, it's not so bad, but in winter, it's a bit of an issue. Okay, so the first top one we're going to use is your finger. So you're going to use your finger to blend. That one triangle there. So I just want you to blend, and you're going to see the complete difference with each thing that we use, how different each of the blending techniques works. Okay, so and you can just write your finger. The next one you're going to do below that is you're going to use your tissue now. So just take your tissue and you're going to blend with your tissue. You see the massive difference between the two. The tissue blend is actually quite lovely. It is, yeah. But you see, it depends on your picture. So whatever texture you, you're trying to create, that's a that's a pleasure. That, that's that's what I love about the charcoal, the willow charcoal. Um, the medium is so versatile. You know, you just think of it as this 
black stuff, you know what I'm saying? And it only does one thing, but it doesn't. It depends on what you use with it, you know? Um, yeah, so if, if you wanted that sort of texture, then you would use your finger to get it, you know? Okay. Because <laughs> you're not going to be able to get that texture with a, with a tissue. And the thing is, that's the big thing with charcoal, is, is bringing all these wonderful textures in. That's why I pick quite a lot of pictures with texture, um, just to to show students what they what it's capable of doing, you know. Okay, so that's your tissue. Then we're going to use a blending stump. I'm going to use my really dirty blending stump. So this will be your blending stump. So your blending stump works very similar to the tissue. But as I said, with the blending stump, you can actually um, go into much smaller areas. So with your tissue, obviously, you're not going to be able to, to go into a very small area with your tissue. I mean, even if you make it quite small, I mean, you could really make it quite small and hard, but you won't get this nice sharp point. Okay, so that's basically what you use your blending stump for. I don't really use a blending stump. Um, on the whole, only for the smaller areas. Okay, so that's your blending stuff. And you can see as well, it almost leaves sort of like marks on there, if that makes sense. So you use your tissues much more, it's, got, it's a bigger area, you know, so it's, it's almost smoother if you want to put it that way. So that's your blending stuff. Then you're going to use your um, ear bud, your cotton bud. Now you see your cotton bud takes off a lot more. That's the one thing with the cotton bud. It's not as smooth as your um, tissue, uh, a bit like your blending stump in a way. But because it's got a coarser texture, literally your cotton, your cotton wool itself, it does take a lot more off as well. Okay, so we use this sometimes. So, so for instance, I press hard here. You can see there, I can actually get a fair amount of charcoal off by pressing hard with this. You'll find with a blending stump, you can do the same, but here you can actually use the tip of the blending stump and you can actually then get marks actually with this okay so this is more for a softer blending and trying to get rid of some a, a lighter area but you can almost blend it in nicely like that you see this so you can take it off a fair amount but it won't really give you a sharp edge this one is going to give you a sharp edge um, but it also depends on the pressure that you use so each each of your tools you have to experiment with and see if you press hard with this one if you press soft with this one how is it going to to actually work Okay, then your other one is, uh, can we just write on there, that one is my cotton bud. So this is where you can vary your tools. If you don't have one particular one in on hand, then that is, you use the other one in, in place of it. Okay, and then I'm going to now do the soft paintbrush. So this, it must be a soft paintbrush. You can't use a hard paintbrush. This also gives you a lovely soft blend as well. Let's look into your tissue. And you can actually use it very gently to change a certain area because it is such a soft, soft thing that you can literally go into an area and just use the tip of it and change. It adds a very subtle um, touch to your drawings. Okay, you can really go very softly. Okay, then last of all, you have your little blending ball as well. So this you can use on top of your existing charcoal and just blend. So it'll work very much like your tissue as well. Okay, but this is basically, we use this more for actually going in and actually adding um, colors or um, some charcoal to your page. 
Okay. So there are other ways you can use these tools as well. So that's basically just if you've got existing charcoal on your page um, and, and you're going to be using those tools, that's what it's going to look like. Just put the, uh, I'm just going to put the cotton ball. Cotton ball. Okay, so with regards to your paper, so remember my paper here is relatively smooth. Okay, so um, you may have a slightly coarser paper. So I'm going to just quickly show you the difference with each one. Because some of, yeah, I'm not sure what everybody has there, so I'm just going to basically just show you. Just so you can see the difference when I'm blending on the coarser paper. So with the coarser paper, if you want to get a smoother blend, you're going to have to press harder. Okay, so this is my finger. So there you can see immediately the texture is a lot coarser than that one because it's a different paper. That's where you can really see the difference between the two different papers. Okay, then I'm going to use the tissue. There, I didn't have to press really hard to get it smooth. So there you can, again, you can see it is quite smooth. If I want to get it smoother than that, I would have to press very hard and really push it into the paper. Okay. The only thing with pressing into the paper hard is when you want to erase an area. Um, this is why in a with all the pictures, when I say if there's an area you want to keep white, just leave it white initially. Don't go and put a gray sort of over it um, because it's very difficult to get that white, white back, depending on the paper that you're using. But there you can see some of the textures showing through again. Then the blending stump. Cotton bud. So you'll see here again, if I use a cotton bud and I try and press hard here, it won't be as effective as that because there I have a smoother paper. And when I press the cotton bud into it, it doesn't take off quite as much. Even if I use a clean cotton bud, it won't take, come off as much as that. And even if I use a clean blending stump, can you see there? It's not as effective as that sort of paper. So this is where... The tricky part comes in when I'm busy teaching the, the Skype lessons online. If I don't, if you're busy using, I'm using this paper, which is the genuine the paper that I use. Um, if, you, if you're not using that and you're using this, you're not going to get the same thing as me. Okay, so you mustn't expect the same result. But what I want you to do is if you have got the course of paper, it's a very good idea to experiment um, on your own to see what you can create. And if you do, you'll know in future if there's a lighter area that you want, then don't go over it like I would in my particular one. Okay. Um, then just the paintbrush quickly as well. So there's your paintbrush. I can get more subtle sort of tones with these ones. Okay. But some people like the, the, the rougher texture as well. It just depends on what you're busy doing, what you're busy drawing. And then obviously the cotton ball. Okay, so that's basically the same as your the other two. Okay, so that's your difference in the paper. You can actually see the big difference between the two there. I'll actually take a photograph and just send it to you guys, just so that you have got a, a picture of the different papers. Sharon, so when we choose paper, yeah. Um, there is a GSM number on the covers only. Okay, that's your GSM is your, um, that's your, the gra uh, not the grain, it's it's how thick the paper actually is. So you uh, get um, a 160 and a 200 and a 300. That's actually the thickness of the paper. I right. see. Okay. Yeah. So you don't want to have anything less than like, but um, normally you'll find your, your paper, uh, charcoal papers, etc., will actually come in slightly thicker, uh, like 160 is probably the minimum that you'll get. Okay, 
Oh, so, um, for instance, like this one here is this is a this is a 120 GSM. So this is going to be a lot thinner paper than this one, which is I think it's a 200. Okay. So you would just pick your thicker papers if you want a, a, a nice and sort of firm surface to work on. But what you'll do then is you'll get on it. It'll actually tell you. It'll say it's for charcoal pens or whatever. But the trick there is the best thing to do is actually open the pad and look at the paper. Okay. Because it, one might say fine texture and they don't all say that. They don't all say this has got a grain or this hasn't got a grain. It'll just say this is suitable for charcoal or pencil or whatever. All right. So the best mm. are always, are always going to a shop. And I literally, if they are open at least, you know, sometimes they seal the bloody things. So, <laughs> and then you, and then you'll see somebody has actually opened the end of it <laughs> so they can feel the texture <laughs> of the paper, yeah. So I, I am very careful when I buy my paper. I always go into the thing and I go and look at it and I feel it because your finger will tell you immediately what sort of surface you're going to be getting. Okay. This one actually says intermediate on the pair, so I knew I knew what I was getting. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then obviously, yeah. Okay. So <laughs> this one just says 110, so it's even less than your 120. But yeah, but it's fine. It's it's fine. It mustn't it just mustn't be anything like 80 or something like that. It's getting a little bit thin. Look, okay. it's fine for charcoal. <laughs> it's actually fine for charcoal. Um, the thicker paper is. Some people just prefer to work on a thicker paper. But if you're working with um, mixed media, so if you're doing pen and ink um, and washes and that sort of thing, then you definitely want to go for a thicker paper because if you go and do any wash on top of that, um, then you're going to, it's going to buckle, you know. So then I normally go for like a 280 or even a 300 GSM just okay. so that it won't buckle, yeah. Um, yeah. And you get good, and obviously, obviously you get better quality paper. So I've got like a cheap, Mont, uh, Montmartre, what they call Montmartre, and they come in a huge variety of, of different types of paper. Um, but you sort of get like the, the students one, um, which can sometimes be not very nice to work on because it doesn't erase very nicely. And for me, erasing is, is very much part of the process of the charcoal. Okay, so, um, right, so now I'm going to just quickly show you what you can do now with your so now we've worked with our blending stumps and that directly onto the existing charcoal, okay? Now what we're going to do is we're going to take those all those things and we're going to put charcoal on them and then put them onto our page, okay? So this is when you want lighter sections, all right? And you'll see they're all going to work in a different way. So have all of you got charcoal dust? Did you manage to make charcoal dust? Yes. You've got, okay, and you, Grace, have you got charcoal dust? Yep. Okay, and you'll just have to answer me on your WhatsApp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or did you just let me know if you did manage to make charcoal dust? Okay, cool, great, there we go. <laughs> Thank goodness for <laughs> technology. I was just saying to the ladies yesterday in class, I said, you know, you can imagine if we if we didn't have, you know, sometimes we, be, we bemoan the fact that we have technology, but, um, you know, and, and you sort of can't get away from anything anymore because it's all in your face the whole time because it's on your phone or whatever it is, you know. But when it comes to this sort of thing and the fact that we have instant Wi-Fi and we can speak to each other from uh, one, one side of the, the world to the other, um, this is where you're really, really grateful for it. <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, you can use, so you can use both. You can use your charcoal dust. I'm going to show you two different ways. So I'm going to take my, um, my finger. Okay. <laughs> so here again, I'm going to take my finger. I'm going to rub it on my charcoal pencil. Oh, not pencil, sorry, the charcoal, the willow charcoal itself. And you can then blend, but you're not going to get a very, much of a blend because now you your your finger is actually actually very smooth. Okay, so but if you want a very 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 soft blend, I mean you can probably not even see that on the screen there. Okay, so you can do that. You can obviously also then also dip your finger into your charcoal dust. Okay, but this is really going to be dirty. 
Okay, and you can put your charcoal on like that. All right. But it is going to give you this texture that you have over here. But this is what I'm trying to say is you can use all of these things to your advantage to create the texture that you're actually looking for. Okay, so there's my nice dirty finger now. <laughs> if you really don't want to get your hands dirty, you don't have to do that one, okay? <laughs> I had some students that can't handle charcoal at all because they, it's, they said it's just too dirty. <laughs> okay, so then your tissue. Again, um, you can actually just take your tissue rub it on your willow charcoal piece there and you can see you can get quite a nice sort of light blend with that okay you can just go directly onto that or there again what i'll do is if you've got a small jar like mine and it's a bit awkward to get the willow charcoal out just put it onto a page just put a little bit onto, on, onto a piece of paper on your table. Then dip your tissue into it. I normally just do a little bit of a blow in case there's some coarser sections on there because I haven't got the board um, one. And then that is now going to be using your tissue in your charcoal dust. And you see you can actually pick up a lot more and you can go back into it again and you can... Do the same thing. Okay, so you can make that darker and darker sections. Right here. That's finger. That's tissue. No, you don't have to be sorry. <laughs> As long as you can hear what's going on, that's the most important. So it's cool. As I said, just, just send a voice message if you want to um, send a, a question. Okay. All right. Because <laughs> I'm not watching the screen, so I can't see if you type anything. Okay. <laughs> okay, cool. So that's your finger, your tissue. Um, now we're going to do the blending stump. Um, so you can just basically do exactly the same thing. You can just take your blending stump. So you can use your blending stump as well. So this is if you want a smaller area. This is where the blending stump is quite nice. I'm going to rub it onto my willow charcoal. And I'm just going to do that. And there I can now literally do almost shapes. Can you see there? I can do trying to do big feather here. <laughs> so you can see you get wonderful little shapes by using the blending stump. You can't do that with any of the other tools. Okay. So you can literally use your blending stump to create... Um, textures like that okay and then obviously that's just rubbing onto the actual uh, charcoal itself and then obviously you can tap it into your charcoal dust if you want to and you're going to get a slightly darker so just be careful there if you want to get a slightly softer feel then you can use your blending stump okay so that's your blending stump Now you can use your earbud, do exactly the same thing, rub your earbud onto your paper, there's my earbud, that's just using it on the actual charcoal itself, the charcoal, the charcoal, you can see it's completely different to the blending stuff, there's a different texture as well. And if I dip it into the charcoal dust, give it a bit of tap. Okay. So you can see just by doing these few things here already, you have a variety of textures. Okay. Uh, the next one is, oh, let me just put the cotton bud, where am I? 
Cotton ball. So the cotton ball, I don't normally put charcoal on there with the charcoal um, itself. Um, this is actually mostly used if you're going to be using the, the charcoal dust. Okay, so there I'm just going to tap it into the dust. Push it into the dust, tap it, and then I'm just going to basically do a blend like that. There we go. That's wonderful for big areas like clouds and that sort of thing. There we go. So those are all of your tools that you can use to, so those are, yeah, those are using all of your blending tools. I'm to Sharon. Yeah. Could you use your soft paintbrush for this? Oh, sorry. I knew there was something missing. What was that? Here we go. <laughs> yes. My apologies. Hey, Bush. Thanks for reminding me. I was looking at my stuff and I'm sure there's something missing here. That's why I was so quiet. I thought, what have I missed? <laughs> I don't have a list of stuff that I'm supposed to be doing. I'm doing it out of my head as I go along. So, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Okay. So then your um, paintbrush is also used, obviously, for your, your smaller, also smaller areas. I wouldn't really use this for very big areas, but you can. Um, also, um, not so easy to, to actually wrap onto your pencil and then pick up the charcoal like that. It's better just to use the charcoal dust itself. Okay. All right. So here we go. Charcoal dust. I'm just going to put it on this side of it here. So this is lovely because um, you can really get a very, very soft, controlled area with this. This makes a beautiful soft area. And what's nice is as well, if you vary the amount of dust on it, so if I only pick up a little bit of dust and I blow or I tap quite the majority of it off, I can actually um, get a very soft, very, very soft feel. So this is when we did the clock. Um, this is how we did the clock. We actually used the, the, the um, paintbrush and we got the clock face which was very very light in in, in tonality um, that's how we did the clock face with, it, with this brush like that so you won't even be able to see that because it's so soft okay so that's the only way you're going to get a very very soft you're not going to get that with the tissue or any of the other things that's only that's when you have the paintbrush which is very handy okay and then obviously you can go back into it over and over again and make it darker and darker okay right um, yeah, so that's, those are all your blending tools that we've used now. So you use them in two different ways, to take off, basically, and to put on. Okay, so taking off the charcoal and putting onto your, um, putting your charcoal on. So you can use them both ways. All right, now we're just going to quickly go through the erasers. So again, what I want you to do this time is I'm going to just put um, a block of charcoal just like that on its own. Make it quite dark. The next one I want you to make a bit lighter. Okay. And the last one I want you to make a block with your um, with your little ball of cotton wool. Make it relatively darkish, okay. Okay, so these are we're going to be using the different erasers here. Okay. Right. 
Yes. So what we're going to do now is um, we're going to first use the kneadable eraser. So your needle eraser in the darker section, okay? So there we're going to, because we're just going to use the needle eraser and the hard eraser, because those are the two that I asked you to have. You're not going to worry about the pencil eraser, but you do, if you have got a pencil eraser, then you can, you can actually do that. Okay, so you're going to see your needle eraser in your dark sections. If you do a little thin point, so if you've got a very dark piece like this, depending obviously on your paper, if you drag through it, it will sort of give you a very vague sort of little line, but doesn't really work that well. So that's, we don't normally use this for, for any sharp lines, okay? We use the hard eraser for that. But to erase a surface here, you can actually, if you press quite hard with the ball, it will take off quite a lot, especially if it's black like that, okay? But if you also do it quite gently, you can also sort of take off, but very gently. So I'm actually barely even touching the paper here. I can actually change the tonality of that black by just touching the surface of the charcoal, almost just moving the charcoal around a bit and just taking a little bit off. Okay, so you can use that. Obviously, then it's, it's going to get dirty quite quickly. So what I tend to do is I tend to sort of uh, just knead it a little bit go back into it again if I want to make it slightly lighter. There you're going to have to have a look. quite a lot of control. You can see I'm actually leaning my hand on the easel here just to give myself more control. Or you can put a piece of paper down if, you, if your surface has already um, been used there. And you can actually go into it and you get quite a nice sort of soft edge. You can almost blend it in quite nicely. Okay. And we're going to do the same with these two over here. So just keep your needle eraser, but just give it a clean. So just to make sure you've got it nice and clean here. So we have a bit of a textured surface over here. There again, I'm just going to maybe, maybe I'm doing bricks or something like that. So you're going to see now when I, that's why I gave you all those examples, the ones that probably scared you. <laughs> So um, you can see now we're going to be using all of these techniques to create all those different textures that I sent to you guys. Okay. So um, there I've just dabbed into it to get a whiter section. Okay. Literally just tapping it into the charcoal. Remember, we're only using willow charcoal here, guys. Okay. And here again, I'm going to just blend it. But this is going to be, this is actually going to smudge it. Okay. So... You, you tap to get this section over here. If you want to get whiter, you will tap into it. You're not going to do what I did over there because that will actually almost act as a blending. Okay, but you can obviously do that to, to blend it. But if you want to keep the texture, you obviously need to <clears throat> just use the tip of it. So if you want a smaller section that you want a bit whiter, you would literally just go into it with a tip. But as I said, you also will have to keep on cleaning it every now and again because it's going to get full of charcoal and it's not going to act very, very nicely. So I tend to twist my hand a little bit. I won't just dab. I'll literally give it a bit of a, a twist to sort of get some of the, the surface off the texture. Okay, I can even go back into that if I want to, the one that I've blended, and you can go back into that. Okay, so that's your using that one. And now we've got a much lighter surface. So if you're going to be... I've got, you've got a lighter area where you want to bring in a little bit of texture or something like that, then you can again use either the tip here. So here you're going to see more of a of a an effect. So here I've got little dots. I'm actually putting little dots down, literally just to the edge. You can see there that's actually quite effective if you want that sort of almost um, what they call a bokeh effect in, in photography where you get the light coming through and making little circles. Then I'm going to use the bigger surface. I can now obviously get a bigger area like that. Okay. And then if I wanted to make a finer surface, so here I'm going to just very gently go into this. And I'm also just working, I'm getting a little bit of a tip, but um, this is why 
almost how we create a bit of water sometimes, depending on what, how dark or light your water is. So I'm creating sort of little stripes here. But it's a very subtle, subtle effect. I'll send you a picture of all of these just now. Once we've done the hard erasers. So that's your soft eraser, so your needle eraser. So just remember to write that at the top there so that you know it is your needle eraser. And this is going to be your hard eraser. So your hard eraser, your pencil's eraser work really similarly. Um, but as the pencil eraser will just give you a little bit more control. We're we'll going to use the hard eraser. So what I'm going to do, if you don't already, if you haven't already cut your hard eraser into um, a sharp edge, I want you just to take your eraser and then just cut a piece off so that you've got a nice sharp corner to work with. That's why I, I, I pick this particular hard eraser because it does. Stay hard for quite a while. Okay, so I've got a nice sharp edge over there. And um, I use the hard eraser. You can to a point sort of, I don't want to actually mess up this one now. So um, you can sort of erase small sections as well. So the hard eraser will actually take off a bigger area and it'll give you a harder edge than your needle eraser. Okay, so this gives you a bit more control and it'll give you a sharper edge as well. So you can just use that to sort of give different textures. I'm just using the end of this one now. I would like, I'm not using that sharp, sharp point because that sharp point I want to show you how to get lines. So I'm just using the one little corner of the hard eraser to show you, you can go back into here and you can create some nice little textures leaving some of the darks behind. And then I can use the very sharp edge that I made to make wonderful sharp lines. What you need to do here is you need to clean it between each line that you make. Okay, so if it's too, this one I've made a little bit too thin. So what I mean is where I've cut the two pieces together, I've made too much of an angle. Okay, so you need to almost have a slightly wider angle so that you've got a slightly harder edge to work with. There we go. So now I can get my grass. So this is how you would do grass on a darker surface. Okay, so that, and I'm, I'll clean sort of in between every now and again so that there's not too much charcoal going back into the picture. Do exactly the same with this over here. You can just use the edge of it to erase certain sections. But this as well, because it's not sticky, like the needle eraser, you can't lift the charcoal off with this. This again is going to, to blend it sort of into your paper. Okay, so the, the needle eraser almost works as a lifting, you could almost say, it lifts the charcoal off your paper. That's why you can get these effects with needle eraser, but you can't really get that effect with this one. So you would use your erasers depending on what you, you actually want to create. And there again, I'm going to use the edge of this and I'm going to do this sort of effect. So you can get different effects in whatever you happen to be drawing. So this will be a much rougher grassy effect. That's how we're going to create that other grass that I sent you the picture of. And then in the softer part that we did here, we can, to a point, create, also you can create nice little balls if you want to, but it's not going to be the same effect as that. So you can, but you can control it quite nicely. Yeah, I can get some nice little effects. I can sort of scratch into this almost and get little, um, I can scribble into it, except I can scribble into that one as well if I wanted to get more of a scribbling effect. And then again, I can do lines as well using the edge. So I can do some lines like that. It's like a cross-hatching effect. Okay. 
Um, and that's the reason I gave you the three different ones. It's a very dark, the sort of light. So you can see the, what difference it makes when you actually use the, the erasers. And then obviously the surface where you haven't actually blended anything. Okay. Cool. So I'll send you a picture of that as well. And, you know, it's funny how some people honestly think that um, this is sort of a boring medium to work with. It's, it's so far from it, you know, just because it's black and white. <clears throat> people seem to think that it's actually boring. Um, oh, I didn't actually send you the other ones. Yeah. No. Yeah, sorry, it's... let me just send that to you. Okay. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, it's excellent. Um, Sharon, my kneadable um, actually yeah. came in square form. So I've just realized yeah. it's actually pull pieces off and then yes. uh, get different yeah. shapes. That's amazing. Yes, that's right. Yeah, correct. It comes in a square in a square packet. Yes. Uh, yeah, like that. There we go. It just comes in a square packet like that. Yeah. And then what I normally do is I, I sort of take it in half and if, if you are working with pencil, then I keep one half for pencil and the other half for, for the charcoal because you don't want to reuse your charcoal one in your pencil drawings. <laughs> That's a good reminder. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I keep them very far away from each other. <laughs> okay, let me just send those, these two to you guys as well. Okay, so Grace, obviously when you, when you get your phone again, you have all these wonderful messages, okay? <laughs> um, Auntie Sharon. Yeah. Would you please excuse me quickly? I just want to run to the bathroom. Yes, no problem. No problem. Go ahead quickly. I snuck out already. Quick sticks. You didn't even notice. <laughs> hey? I snuck out very quickly. I I was dying to go. <laughs> oh shame, man. Okay, yeah. <laughs> but I didn't see anything, Sharon. <laughs> And you know, that's a problem with winter, is I find that you do, you do, you need to go more often. So, um, you know, and I'm a motorcyclist, so in winter, it's the worst time. Oh, I don't mind riding in winter at all, especially in the middle of um, the day. It's, it's actually wonderful for riding motorbikes, but, um, but my word, I tell you something, I need the loo so much more often than I do in summer, <laughs> much to my husband's. Uh, yeah, disgust, you know, not disgust, but he just, you know, he just sort of looks at me and I'm like, yeah, well, sorry, what can I say, you know? So. <laughs> and it just doesn't matter how little you drink, it still, it still doesn't help. <laughs> um, it's the strangest thing. Yeah, it is actually. It just it, it makes you want to go. <laughs> Maybe because we're drinking more tea and coffee and. Possibly, yeah, you're right. Actually, yeah, but I think it's because you're not you're not sweating anything out. You know what I'm saying? So oh, exactly, it makes sense. Yeah, definitely, you would definitely not be sweating anything out. So yeah, okay. But um, yeah, but as you can see, I mean, wow, you can you can really do you can do so much with all of these these wonderful sort of textures. You know, um, yeah, you'll, really you'll notice I haven't really used the the charcoal pencil. So, um, but I'll show that, I'll show you now, I'll just show you one section of the charcoal pencil, but it's not one, I normally use mostly willow charcoal in the pictures, and I only bring the charcoal pencil in right at the end, um, because it's it's really not that easy to to erase. If you want to do a quick sketch, then obviously you can use your charcoal pencil, and you can do it, you can also, um, you know, uh, do nice quick sketches with it, so that is the advantage of the, the charcoal pencil. Um, because you've got a nice sharp point that you can work with um, and you can get sort of finer detail almost. Okay, are you back, Grace? Yeah, I'm back. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so um, if I did take my, my charcoal pencil now and just did a block, so you can do this just so that you can see what's going to happen. We're just going to do one block, okay? The charcoal pencil. Oh, you can see the texture is a lot rougher. 
Actually, let's just do let's just do two blocks just so you can see the difference. I just want to show you the difference. I want you to do two blocks. In the one block we're going to to blend quickly with a blending stump. The other one we're going to leave rough. Okay. So there I'm going to take the blending stump and I'm going to blend that. So this is a medium uh, one that I'm using. As I said, you also get the soft and the hard as well. And then I'm going to use the needle eraser at the top and um, the hard eraser at the bottom. I have lost my legal eraser. Oh, there it is. Also, you find your erasers, especially these small little pieces that you cut and and you start erasing with they eventually become so black that you actually can't see them anymore. Um, and I pick them up instead of my charcoal. So what you need to do there is you basically would just take your your sort of blackened eraser and you can clean it. You know just take it on, on a piece of paper and then just, you know, rub it onto a surface or a piece of paper, then just give it a good clean so that you've got a, a clean edge again. Okay. You can also do it on some smooth um, paper as well, a smooth, what do you call it? Uh, sandpaper. All right. So I'm just going to show you the difference here. So now I'm going to use the needle eraser here. So you can see immediately. <laughs> doesn't really make any difference. Okay. So if I, if I dab on here, it actually doesn't, it does take something off, but it doesn't really make a difference, okay? So um, it's not a very really workable charcoal. Um, I can blend it, obviously, but it will basically be like that. But you can see I can't really, unless I press very hard, I can't really get much of the charcoal off. That's about as much as I can get off. And it's going to still leave some behind, so you're not going to be able to get rid of that. And then with your other surface, so here it will be a little bit more effective because now I have blended some of it in, but it's definitely not will not go as white as that. Okay, so you're not going to be able to pick up enough of that charcoal. I've had to really press really hard into it. I was knocking my easel over here to be able to get it whiter. Um, there again, blending doesn't really do very much. So you can see that, yeah, as I said, it's not a very workable charcoal at all. And then with the hard eraser, also you have to press very hard to be able to erase anything here. I want to try and get that grassy effect. You can, if you want a darker section, you see you can get a different, it just gives you a different effect basically. Okay. Um, you want to try? So here again, I'm just going to go into it. So there, obviously, because I have blended it slightly, you can see the white a bit better. And I'm using the edge of the eraser here to get that section there. And I'm just getting a sharper one. So I've got, I've got quite a few of these erasers that I've just cut up. And then I just look at the edge and I see, okay, is that one going to work for me? Is it not? And so there we're going to do the whiter edge. So when you blend it a little bit, then it works, obviously works better than that. Okay. And that side there. All right. So that's just your, that's your charcoal pencil, depending. And as I said, it'll vary with your paper. It'll also vary with your um, the type of charcoal pencil that you use as well. Whether it's hard, soft, or medium. Okay, so those are all of your tools that you can use. Um, I haven't really used any other tools with with my my um, charcoal before. 
those are the majority of tools that I do use. I find, um, yeah, you, you don't really need anything else. As I said, also, if you want to work on your surfaces and you want to, so say you've done your little picture and you want to work on top of it again, then you can obviously then um, fix it. So I'm just going to fix this surface for interest sake, just so you guys can see quickly. I'm just going to let it dry a little bit, just so I can show you. Because if I had to, if I had to scratch into this now, it's it's going to, it's actually going to to create a, a, a texture which I may not want, but I might want to work on top of this again. Okay, so say for instance, just for this piece over here, for interest sake, I'm going to fix it just to show you what you can do. And you can also see what happens when you fix it. Okay, so we'll have to give it a few moments to dry. And some fixative has got a very strong, <laughs> very strong style, this one has. <laughs> my window. I sprayed the other night, I was busy fixing my charcoal drawings, and my husband says, what are you doing? <laughs> so with all the windows closed, not a good idea to do it at night. So I'm just going to try and get that to dry quickly. Just put it in the sun for a moment quickly, just to dry. Because I'll show you this, and then we can have our break. How long is today's lesson? Um, look, we basically, after this break now, we're going to just go into doing some of those textures using these techniques now. Okay. So, yeah, we should be finished. Uh, look, half uh, past 12, I'd say. Is that all right? Yeah, perfectly fine. Okay, cool. Now, I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah, we're finished by half past 12. We should be done. Super. Okay. That's why I said we're not going to do those pictures um, very large or anything. It's just to just to give you an idea of, um, I want you to actually look at a surface. Um, that's why I'm giving you all those different surfaces. And we're just going to draw little sections of them each just to give you an idea of what you can try. And then, of course, you can experiment further at home on your own. Okay. All right, so that has sort of dried, I think. It's not hundred percent dry yet. Let's just see. So I have now fixed it. So if I go into it now with an eraser, you can see it doesn't do anything. Okay, so it's fixed the charcoal onto the page. There we go. Nothing's happening. Okay. Um, so you can lean on it. It's not going to... Okay, that's a dirty piece of eraser. Sorry. Get a clean one quickly. Okay. So there again, you can see we have fixed it. Nothing's happening. All right. And if you lean on it, nothing's going to happen either. But now what you can do is now you can work on top of it again. Okay. So now I can add some textures or whatever it is to it. But I will not be able to erase anything. Okay. And I can actually literally blend on top of it, etc. if I want to. And sketch on top of it. Create different textures. Okay. So that will give you... So if you have, say you've got this lovely texture here and you don't want to get rid of it, you don't want to work into it, but you want to use it as a base, for instance, or you want to use that as a base, but you don't want to, and you put your light areas that you want and you want to work over it again and you don't want to mess it up, then you can fix it and then just work on top of it. But then just remember, as I said, you cannot erase afterwards. Okay. All right. Cool. So we're going to have our break now. Um, yeah. And then we'll meet back at top of 11. All right, Perfect. and then just let me know if you have any questions, okay? All right, thank you. All right, Karen. so we're not going to, because it's only the three of us, I'm not going to worry to to sit and, and chat to you guys, because, yeah, I mean, there isn't no. really any point right now. So <laughs> I'd rather give you a break, a proper break, okay? So you can go and have a cup of tea, or maybe go sit in the sun for a bit as well to warm up. <laughs> okay, but has oh. anybody got any questions? Are you guys okay? You you fine with regards oh, to you, for the moment? Okay. All right, Thank you. I'm going to stop recording that, and I'll see you. Right. 
Okay. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to um, start working with those examples that I gave you, the ones that I sent you. So um, just put more light on here quickly. There we go. Put my sun in my room here. Okay, so what we're going to do now is, um, if you've got those, those photographs as a reference, so we're going to work with the first one. That's that one with the bricks and the rough surface like that. Okay, so just get that one out so long quickly. So we have seven, seven little things. One, two, three, four. We've got seven, seven things. Okay, and we have an hour basically to cover them all. So I'm not going to spend more than. Let's work that out. <laughs> okay, so just short of 10 minutes on each one. Okay, but the water's very quick. So, yeah, the water won't actually take very long at all. So that one I'm not going to worry too much about. Um, yeah, so we'll make it about 10 minutes or so per, per session. Okay, roughly. All right, so we're going to work with that one first. So um, just going to give you a rough idea. The reason I picked that one because it's got two different surfaces. It's got the bricks and it's also got that sort of mortar that's that that rough, very rough. Uh, um, I don't know what you call it. it. Almost looks like mud that's been thrown at the wall. Like here in South Africa, we get those you know those very muddy sort of walls that you get. Um, yeah, I don't think I want to live in that house. It looks rather much. <laughs> okay, so. Um, with regards to sketching out, so if you've got a picture that you're going to sketch out beforehand, it's very important to note that you, if you are going to be using pencil, um, draw very lightly with a pencil. Don't draw, don't, don't press into the paper very hard, because what happens is um, once you've erased that section, um, a the eraser actually changes the texture of the paper. Okay. And I'm going to show you exactly what happens there because this happened to a few of my students where they've gone and actually sketched the drawing, but they used a grid system. So they've gone and drawn all the grids onto the page with pencil. Then they've done their sketch and then they've gone and erased the grids. And this is what happens. So I'm just literally going to just, I'm going to make you erase a mark here. Okay. So if I, I put pencil over there, okay. And then I'm going to go over it with the charcoal and when so it doesn't affect it when it's like this okay now for some reason today it's not affecting it <laughs> just my luck <laughs> so normally what happens is let's try again <laughs> so okay so I've used pencil and you've had to press quite hard on the paper <laughs> okay Maybe my paper is that good today that it actually isn't doing it. But what I've had is with a lot of students that they've gone and um, done a, a picture over it and it's actually left a line. Oh my word. Okay, I haven't done it with this one. All right. I haven't actually used this paper. I've never actually raised on this paper. But what actually happens is they ended up with all of these grids. And it, it didn't matter what they did. They couldn't get rid of the fact that the eraser had pressed into the paper and actually uh, changed the surface of the paper. Okay, so this is a particularly good paper. So obviously, for some reason, it doesn't do it. So I can't show you what happens. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> anyway, but that's, that is what can happen. So normally what I'll do is I usually sketch it out with willow charcoal, if possible. Okay. Um, I tend to trace my drawings. So I don't use a grid system. Um, especially when it comes to more detailed work. So if it's if it's uh, sort of like a landscape or something, then I can just sketch it out quite easily. It's not a problem. But um, if it's got maybe it's a face or something like that, then and I have to use um, a grid system, um, then I'd rather use um, a tracing. So enlarge the picture and literally then trace it with charcoal onto my page. All right. Um, I will show you. So if I do go into this with pencil. So say I've, I've sketched out with my pencil, okay? And then I've erased this part. A, your pencil will, will not necessarily always come off, okay? So it is going to leave a mark like that. It's very seldom that your pencil comes off completely. And also it tends to make a bit of a dent in the paper. Okay. 
as well. And then especially when you're getting into a lighter section, um, when you go back into it and you start erasing completely, what happens is it sometimes leaves a bit of a, a mark behind. Okay, so depending on how hard you press onto your paper. All right, so I generally, as I said, I normally use my willow charcoal to do this. Okay, so what we're going to quickly do is we're going to go into this first one. We're going to do the bricks. So let me just quickly, I'm going to actually just blend this all together. I'll back for the moment. I'm going to leave that for the water. Okay, so I'm going to do the water with this one. So that I'm just going to blend with my... Right, that will be the water one. Okay, so with the bricks, basically, we're just going to do... We're going to sketch out our bricks. Okay, so let's just do... You can just do two rows of bricks. It's okay. So we want to try and get these... These sections done quite easily and quickly. And you're going to sketch out only with your willow charcoal. So we only use willow charcoal throughout this whole session. We're not going to use the charcoal pencil. We're only going to use it right at the end. Okay. And with the bricks especially, uh, the bricks are already coarse as it is in this picture. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll either use the side of my willow charcoal and just go over it very gently, just to already get that bricky effect. So I'm not going to, I'm not, you're already getting the detail almost immediately without having to put in too much work. Okay, then I'm just gonna go very softly to get that sort of brick effect. And obviously your different paper is going to give you a slightly different texture, okay? Um, if your mortar in between isn't dark like in this one, then obviously you're going to leave a gap in between. So this mortar is, is sort of, um, it is actually dark in between the bricks, um, but if not, then you would literally leave a gap like that and then put in your next brick and then leave the mortar white, okay? And then you would work within that mortar because that's what we had to do with the, with the one that we did the other day, which was the post box one that I've posted. Um, we did that, okay? So then you would leave white in between, all right? So, um, not you guys are trying to WhatsApp me. Okay, so you've already got a bricky area there. You don't have to do too much to it because you've left some of the white behind. And that's why I'm saying don't make um, too much work for yourself. So don't go and say, okay, I will take the white out later. If you can leave the white behind already, that's already taken a lot of your work away. So it's taken a lot of your time out of your, your picture. Okay. Now I'm just going to go back into this now and I'm sort of looking at the example and I'm just going to put in the darker sections where I see the darker sections and just, I'm um, also I'm going quite gently, all right. So I'm not pressing hard, um, only if you want it very really dark or very really black. So say I want this very really black in between, then I will go blacker, okay. But for the moment, I'm just trying to create, recreate. And also don't be so slavish, or, yeah, I think slavish is the way you say it. Um, to the, the picture itself, um, you don't have to look at each brick and recreate it exactly the same, unless you want to, okay. And again, don't use a straight line. So when you're drawing your bricks, you'll notice I didn't, if you look at the surface of your brick. So when I'm looking at my bricks, okay, the bricks don't have a solid black line. All right, so never use a solid black line in your drawings unless you see a solid black line. So all of your lines will be relatively sketchy. So you can see the way I sketched those out was with a broken line. Because that it has got a broken line. So I'm just going to add some of the dark sections here and put in some little extras. And then obviously you can go back into this and if you want to lighten certain areas because you made them too dark, then you can do that. So say I want to make this section much darker, then I'll go and make that section a little bit darker. But because it's a brick, I'm going to try and not use my blending stump at all, um, or any of the um, the blending tools, okay? Because I want to keep that texture, and that's the tricky part with, with, with this. Not really tricky. You must just keep it in mind. If you are trying to create a texture, try and not try and create it the first time around because you, that is your medium is already like that, that it gives you a texture, um, and don't use your blending stump or any of your blending things, unless you want to, okay. 
and does she have a very specific reason for the using it? Because um, to get this texture back again is going to be very, very difficult. Okay, so that's basically your bricks. It really is quite easy. If your bricks are darker on the ones that say, say you've got a picture where the bricks are darker, then you would literally just go into it and you would make that brick darker by just adding some more texture to it. But always remember, it does have texture, therefore you leave some of the white behind. You don't want to bring that white back. Because even if you're using your sharp eraser or your needle eraser, what happens is as soon as you go into that brick with those erasers, it smudges. Okay. It really, you, you, you can't recreate this texture again with an eraser. It doesn't work. All right. So you must rather just keep it soft, get the texture initially, and then, and almost, I always work from light to dark. So I always work from a lighter um, and then go darker if you need to. So rather err on the side of caution. Okay. That's basically your bricks. Very simple. And then for that little section underneath with all of those little body keys of stuff. Okay. So this time, um, this way around, first I used this, I uh, used the sideways because it was bricks and they happened to be rectangular. So that's fine. I used the side of it. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just bring in that. Now also a broken line. Okay. So not a solid line because it isn't a solid line. Remember? It isn't a solid line. And now I'm also going to work with some darker sections in between. I'm also going to try and keep that texture there. And this time I'm not using the flat surface of it, I'm using the pointed surface, not the pointy pointy. So I've sort of got like a, a flattish side to it. Um, you can always make it flatter by just rubbing it on some paper or on some your, uh, and paper. So you can see what I'm doing is um, here, what I'm trying to recreate is um, a, a rough surface. So what I always try and tell the students with their painting as well, remember what it is you're busy painting or what it is you're actually drawing. And you almost use the feeling of that texture on your paper. <laughs> so um, okay, let me try to explain it like this. It's a really difficult thing to explain sometimes. So if I look at this, this, this texture over here, if I had to touch it, okay, when I touched it, it's the same with the bricks, it wouldn't be smooth. So when I'm using my charcoal, I'm going to touch it onto the paper as if I'm touching that surface. Does that make sense to you guys? Your, your yes. marks are all off. I just want to know if that <laughs> makes sense to you. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So um, your, your tactile, that's why your hands are so incredibly important when it comes to drawing. So, um, and with painting as well, it's the same. It's when I paint a hat on somebody's head and it's got, it's got balls of wool. Um, I always think about, I don't look at the, I look at the picture obviously as a reference, but I always, I'm always aware of what it is I'm actually busy painting. And the way I put my paint onto that surface, um, I think about the physical properties of that thing. And I almost try and put it through my pencil or my my um, my paint or whatever it is. Okay, so I know it may sound very strange to you now. <laughs> but and, and, and it took me quite a few a long time before I actually realized um, and, and a way of, of actually explaining it is literally as if I'm actually touching that surface now with my charcoal. Okay, so pretend this is your finger, you're touching the surface, and that's exactly how it would feel. So you're trying to almost recreate that feeling through your fingers, okay, onto your surface, and it will immediately give you that surface. It just does. Obviously, look, it depends on the tools that you're using. Um, you know, with the charcoal, it's very conducive to, to these sort of rough um, textures where you can just touch the paper and it will do its thing. And also <laughs> here, we're also trying to get the minimum of work in, a, you know, in, in the whole thing. We're trying not to make too much work for ourselves, so we're trying to create it as quickly as possible with the least amount of work, but trying to create that texture. So you can see there, I'm already starting to get that sort of rough wall effect. There are darker sections and, and lighter sections. There won't really be any 
absolutely white sections at all. So each surface has got a slight touch of um, texture to it. So where those two are very white, they wouldn't be white. Well, they actually darken a picture, but anyway. Um, but so I didn't want them to be absolutely white. And I would literally just touch, like very lightly touch the surface to create that texture. So there I have a nice rough texture. Okay, so that's basically your rough texture. So any of your rough textures, when it comes to rocks, boulders, stones, um, anything with a rough texture, that is how you would re uh, create a rough texture. Okay. If you do have a very dark cliff side, I'm just going to quickly just show this to you. If you have a dark cliff side, like yesterday we did these very dark cliffs. What I did was I initially put down quite a darkish area, like so. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly do. Okay. But then where it wasn't too dark, I would go over light and I would actually go back into it with my charcoal. Uh, sorry, with my razor, my hard eraser, and I brought back trying to keep some of the texture. But you can see what happens is it actually smooths out the area. So the cliff sides were sort of relatively smooth, but then they did have some rough textures to them as well. And that's where you can play around now using the eraser to bring some of the smooth areas back. So these are these overhanging sort of cliff sides. Okay. All right. So that is um, when you bring your eraser into it, when you want to recreate something smooth in that area. And then you leave rougher. And then, of course, you can then bring back in some roughness. So say I wanted to bring a little bit of roughness back into there. This is where the very small little pieces of the charcoal come in quite handy. When you've got small areas, it just does take a little bit of control. Um, so, and especially your hands are cold and stiff, they're not always going to work so well. So, um, but you can bring a little bit of texture back in there, but you're never going to recreate that texture, okay, by going over it. Okay, so that's your, your rocky sort of areas. Now we're going to go into the wood. So with the wood, we're just going to do one of those planks. We're not going to do them all. So I just want you to pick a plank, but especially one of the ones with the wheels in it. Okay. So we're going to go down with your willow charcoal again, obviously. So unless I say charcoal pencil, just don't use your charcoal pencil. Okay. What we're going to do here, we're going to go lightly over it. Don't press too hard. We're going to make a mid-tone here, okay? We're going to bring the darks and the lights back into it. All right. Sorry, so Sharon. Is... Yeah. Sorry to interrupt you. What were you using there? Your charcoal pencil or? No, no, just willow charcoal. Yeah. So we always use a, unless I say charcoal pencil, then just okay. use your willow charcoal each time. Yeah. So your willow charcoal. Now, that's the other trick to if you are going to be erasing white areas, okay, and depending on your paper. Um, this is where, when I want to make this area gray, I'm not going to use my blending stump and I'm not going to use the tissue because what happens is that pushes the charcoal into the paper, okay, and it makes it more difficult to take off. So what I'm trying to do here is I want to bring some of the whites back to get that woody texture. Um, but I don't want I don't want to press this this gray into this. I'm going to use the um, paintbrush because it's so soft, and I'm just going to softly blend this in. And I'm going to use the same vertical lines here. Okay, so don't don't go and don't go and do it sideways. Don't go it horizontally. If you're ever looking at your objects as well, that's another thing as well. So whatever textures you're trying to create. So say if it was water. You, you're not going to do your water like this. You're going to go across sideways because that's the way the water actually does go, if that makes sense. All right, so you always follow the contour of the object that you're busy drawing. Okay, so I'm just going to go there. And I've already immediately got a woody texture. Already I've got some of the darks and the lights there. Okay. If you want to and you find it's not dark enough, 
You can go back into it again, put another layer on top, and then just go with your um, paintbrush. So as I said, the paintbrush doesn't push it in too hard. That's a big thing. Okay, so let's just do, for interest sake, I'm just going to do a darker section here, just for interest sake. I'm going to do a very dark section, just to show you the difference between the two. And again, I'm going to go here. So now this is giving me a slightly more a darker one. So it depends on what you what you want to do. Okay, so which which um, one you want to start off with this. Okay, so this one has already left me some woody textures, and this one has not. This is more plain. Okay. Right. So now, now I'm going to use my hard eraser first, and then I'm going to bring in the dark lines. So you can pick one of those pieces of wood. And the reason I picked the ones of the worlds is because it just adds a bit more interest. So you can first take your willow charcoal and you can put in, say, two of the worlds. Just give it a little bit of a, a little mark like that, just so you know where they are, because you can go back into them later. Like so. All right, and we can do the same with the other one if you want to do. So um, you must make sure you've got a nice sort of sharpish edge to this. And I'm going to sort of follow that wood grain. I'm going to use the edge of my thing and I'm going to drag like that. And I'm going to leave gaps in between. You can make them slightly thicker by just changing the size. If you want to have a thicker line somewhere. And blow every now and again. Just leaving that slight grey gap in between. And if there's a darker section between, remember you don't have to follow the picture exactly, Just um, you can just use it as a reference or if you want to follow it exactly, you're welcome to. And depending on how large you're doing this as well, that's also going to be important. And as I said, you can change the thickness by just um, literally changing the edge of your thing. So that's why it's nice to have one that's, I've got like a small one here, and the one side's a bit wider, and the other side's a bit thinner. Okay, and then um, and I'll do the other one quickly as well. So here you'll see the white is now going to show up a little bit more, but you don't really have the gray and the tone. So I normally work with the lighter gray, and then I'll put the darks back in on top of this. Okay, so um, all right, so let's just first do the darks. So now I'm going to go back into this now, and I'm going to bring some of the darks back that I can see. And then you're just going to very gently bring in some of the darks. And don't be, also again, don't, don't make them all exactly the same. So don't go and do a line like this. Okay. All right. I want you to go softly, break it every now and again. Don't make it a solid line. Make it more, as if you just remember, it's, it's wood. So the same principle applies here as it does with this one as well. If you were touching that wood, you wouldn't, it wouldn't make a solid smooth surface because it isn't a solid smooth surface. Okay. So just get rid of that there. And I'm again, I'm just touching it slightly, very softly, just to get that woodiness. And I always leave the, the darkest areas for last. So what I'll do is I'll first bring all of my side woody textures in. And then right at the end, I'll decide whether or not I'm going to Make sections darker. And obviously you can vary this to your own your own liking. Okay, so yours um, won't necessarily look like mine. I never expect all of the students to be exactly the same. A, because it's a paper, and B, because it's very much a personal thing as well. So you may look at it and say, yeah, not quite my scene, so I think I'm going to make it a little bit darker or a little bit lighter. Okay. So that's a big thing with the classes as well. I don't expect everybody's to be exactly the same. That's not the idea. The idea is just to use the tools that I've given you to create something that you like. 
or that talks to you. So here again, I can go into this section and make some sections darker. I can either look at my reference or I can just use my own initiative and just, just do where I want to do it. If I want to make now where I did the eraser a little bit thinner, then I'll just go into it and make them thinner by literally just going over it. And if you really want to write at the end, you can go in with your charcoal pencil and make some dark areas. Okay. But as I said, on the whole, I find the willow charcoal does the job very really nicely. Just there might be some areas at the end that you want to make a little bit better. Okay. So that will give you more of a roughish texture. If you really want to make it smoother, so for instance, when we did the clock one, um, I wanted the background to be um, the woody background. I wanted it to be smoother. Okay, I didn't want the texture to show through because I wanted the texture of the clock to show through. So then what I did was I did this. Okay, and then I'm just going to do the top half now is then I went in with the paintbrush. Okay, and then I just basically smoothed everything so that it was a little bit smoother. So it had more of a blurred effect. And that's what we use a paintbrush for. We use it to blur any sections. So we draw a section in and then we use the paintbrush to blur it. Okay, so that's basically a blurred piece of wood that's far away. Okay, so you've got basically your atmospheric perspective. And then this is obviously wood that is a little bit closer to you, which is a bit more texture. Okay, so those are, that's your piece of wood. So I'm just keeping an eye on the time. Um, okay, doesn't matter if we go over a little bit. Okay, then over here I'm going to just show you the darker, what it looks like when it's a bit darker. You'll see the difference. I'm not looking at the reference, I'm just basically going into it quickly just to give you an idea. Just to show you the difference between the two. You can see that's immediately not as effective. A, because you've already taken some of the texture away by making it very smooth, okay? Whereas the first time around, it already had a little bit of the texture showing, all right? Um, you can use this, it's not a problem. But then you just got to be very careful how you bring your lines in. So here I'd have to almost bring in some finer lines using the very edge of this to, to bring some of those fine textures back. But this isn't the way I would normally go about doing it. Okay. But um, if you do want to, you can. And then you can go into it again and now make it slightly darker, bringing some of the textures in. So if you do have a darker area, this is this is this is sort of the route you would go. Okay, but there again you can see the wood there, but it's not obviously my lights aren't as light. Um, if I really wanted to make them much lighter, it'll be difficult with that hard eraser. Um, I would actually then have to use the eraser pencil, and then I could actually go back into it now and actually bring in some of the lighter areas that I see. You can see how well this works because you are pressing quite hard into it and um, you can take off a fair amount of the willow charcoal. You can actually see I can create quite nice textures with this as well. Okay, so we have two different pieces of wood. All right. This is also very nice. Um, this has got a, a sort of a coarseish sort of texture to it. Um, it's not a very smooth rubber. It's quite a hard, it's a hard rubber, but it's also quite sort of coarse. Um, what's nice about this, I know some of you probably don't have it, but if you do have one, what's quite nice is if you do have a surface like this, for instance, you can go into it with this eraser, which you can't do with a normal hard eraser. And you can actually recreate a rough surface with it because you can press quite hard into it. Okay. So you can recreate a different type of texture with this particular one. Okay, but not everybody has these. So that's a different texture you can recreate. 
Okay, so the next one we're going to do is we're going to do those trees that are in the distance. You all good so far? Any questions? No. Good? All good. Are you all coping okay? <laughs> not, so, not, so di not so difficult now, hey? No, actually not. No. <laughs> you just need to know your tools and you're fine. <laughs> No, it's okay. not such a mystery anymore. <laughs> no, it actually is. So that's why I decided, because I know you guys have came in sort of not really knowing how charcoal works. It's important for you to know how it really works, you know. So, okay. Right, so now we're going to do the trees. Okay, so I'm going to basically draw the trees in with my willow charcoal again. I'm just going to give the, the few little trees there. Most of these are actually taken from some of the um, charcoal things we've already done, actually. So this is one of the backgrounds. Okay. Okay. So I've sort of given, I've, I've just given my, my tree some treeness, some tree trunks quickly, put them in there just like that. It's just, it's fine like it is. Okay. Then I'm going to... Go in with my paintbrush. I'm going to get some charcoal dust. This is now for the background section, okay, behind the trees. And I'm going to bring this charcoal dust in between the trees. Because I want that, that background to stay very soft. We are going to soften the, the trees just now, but I'm going to first bring in the charcoal dust. Because again, I don't want to go into the thing. Well, you can't really do this any other way. You have to do the charcoal dust and the paintbrush. Okay, so we're going to just go in between there. It doesn't matter if you catch the edges of the trees, not an issue. We're going to blend them all together anyway. And because it's also, again, um, it's you can see I'm almost using a circular motion for this because it's actually trees in background. Okay, so it's actually bushes in the background. So there again, I'm thinking about the surface that I'm going to, I'm trying to recreate, or the object that I'm trying to recreate, even although it is blurred. I'm using a circular motion. I'm not doing an up and down motion. Okay. I'm using a circular motion. Between there. Go all the way to the end. Now I can go into my trees and I can actually make them darker. So I'm going to blend the trees now into that background. Okay, so I'm just going to use the paintbrush to blur them into the background. Because if it's very far away, you're not going to see any distinct lines. So if you actually look at that reference, you'll see there are no sharp, edges because it's also again atmospheric perspective it's far away so therefore you would then create soft lines so whether the two the dark and the light joins each other you're not going to have a very distinctive line because it's not going to look like it's far away then and in the foreground is what i'm going to also blur because this whole area is blurred What I'll actually do is I'll send you the picture that we did of this one, which has got the tree trunk in the front, which has got all the wonderful textures. I'll send that to you as an example. Um, and you can you can try that at home if you want to. If it's something, a project that you'd like to try, I'll send you the original photograph and then I'll send you the, the drawing that I did. Okay, so we've really got this um, nice sort of blurred effect. Make sure you've got no sharp lines, so you can really blur them in. And that's what's so nice about the paintbrush is you can, you can actually go into it quite easily without it um, spoiling the whole thing. If you go into this with the eraser or one of the other tools, it's going to take off too much. So you want to try and keep as much as possible. And just get it all nice and blurred. Now I'm going to quickly bring in those the definition of the trees in the background. So there's a sort of bushes in the background. <clears throat> I'm going to use a needable eraser for this, okay? 
Make sure it's clean. So just give it a bit of a knead if you've got too much charcoal on it. And you're going to do the same as you did with these little balls over here. All right. And you're going to be using the paintbrush. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I did, I did Pilates at home yesterday and I'm quite stiff this morning. So why don't you bend over? I don't know why I did it though. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to sort of get that, that sort of mottled effect. Okay. So I'm going to tap my... Eraser over there to get that mottled effect that I can see in the background. Those sort of leaves that are catching the light in the background. I'm just tapping with a little bit of the... Eraser there, and I'm going to do it in between as well, so because you can see it's in the background as well there. In the foreground, there's almost like a white sort of, um, obviously piece of grass that's highlighted by the sun. That I can also use this eraser. I'm going to go sideways there, obviously, because it's now, it is horizontal because it's part of the ground. So there I'm going to go sideways in between, and because I go quite softly, I can immediately get that effect there and then I'm just going to get the mottled effect so the mottled effect you can have it white uh, you know you can erase more if you want to with it just get that mottled effect I'm just going to tap in between and if you like that you can leave it just like that it's up to you what I normally do is I do something like this and then I will leave it I will do the rest of my picture and then decide whether or not I want it to be a little bit softer. So I'm going to just take a, a pre-photo a pre and then an after photograph, okay? So this is the pre one where I haven't actually softened it. All right. So I can do that. But my idea here is actually to make it soft. So um, let me send it to you guys quickly. Right. Now I'm going to take my paintbrush, make sure it's clean. All right, so you don't want any charcoal, resi uh, residual charcoal on from any of your other drawings. Just give it a good clean. You don't have to wash it. You literally just give it a good brush on your a piece of tissue paper. And then I'm going to go and soften all of this now. Very, very softly. Okay, so I'm not not pressing hard at all because remember your willow charcoal is so such a gentle surface. I'm literally just going to soften the edges around those little balls. Okay, so that I have a a much softer area. I think I repeat myself quite a lot, ladies, so just excuse me. Um, <laughs> I always warn everybody when I send videos to them that they are unedited, so they just have to accept them as they are, with all the random stuff in between. Um, and I am, sorry, I am cleaning in between, so I sort of do a little bit of a Soft here to soften it slightly. Clean, soften slightly. Clean, soften slightly. Clean. And then right at the end, I can go back over my trees if I want to to soften them again. So if I want to soften them again, that background, I can do that. If you find your trees are, are, have gone too light, um, you can go back over them with your willow charcoal. So you just put your willow charcoal back over them again and um, and then just use your paintbrush to blend them in. Okay, so you can you can change the tonalities of your trees. Or if there's a section that you want slightly darker somewhere, you can either pick up your a bit of your willow, uh, your willow charcoal dust and then go into it with that if you want to. You know, say I want a section darker over here in the background, I could do that, then just go in with the willow charcoal dust, okay, but the trees themselves, you can literally go in and just say, I want this tree a little bit darker, so say for instance, I just want a little bit darker there, I'm going a bit extreme here, but it's just to give you an idea, then I can go back into it with the willow charcoal, and then if I want to bring some of those leaves that I see at the top there, So you see those leaves there? 
I don't do those in the beginning. I do those because they are on top of the rest of this other light over here. So there again, I'm just going to make a few little, little, little marks. Okay, so little balls almost. I'm literally just going to do a few little balls here and there. I'm not going to... I'm not going to make a whole big round ball because I want these leaves to be on top of that background. If you want to bring in a little branch or something, you can do that as well. Just use a broken sort of line like this. We're going to soften it just now. So if you do want to bring in a branch or two, you can do that as well. Just using a few little dots like that. I'm literally going to dot on top where I want my leaves to be. And then again, I'm going to go over that with the paintbrush. Okay, now I'm going to soften my dots so that they look like branches. And obviously you can add more dots, join them up, you know what I mean? So if it's a, if it's a bit thicker somewhere and it's not really working, so it's too, too few dots like that, if you want to say that, I can just add in some more dots to try and make it a little bit, a little bit bushier. But I'm just still using little dotty marks and I'm leaving some of the white showing through because I always say you need to let the birds fly through the gaps. So, as I said, always start off with less and then put more in if you need to. There, yeah, I've got my soft background trees. And you make them as blurred as you want. I'm going to bring my branches there. So this is just for a blurred background. This is obviously not for a background that is is um, in front of you that's that's close to you. Okay. So this is just to recreate blurred backgrounds in your landscape pictures. So it doesn't matter what it happens to be, um, what objects are in the background. This is exactly how you would treat them. You do everything softly and you blur everything with a paintbrush. Okay, so those are your trees. You guys good there? Yes, thank you, Sharon. Just quickly soften that a little bit more. So yeah, as I said, you just make them as soft as you want them to be. I'll send you a picture there. If you make a mistake, so say for instance, I can see now there's a weird B over there, which I don't really like. Um, I'm going to erase it. So I would go in with the needle eraser, erase that branch, okay? And then just go back into it with the paintbrush and voila, it's gone. Okay, so those are your trees. I'll take a photo of that quickly as well. Send it to you after class. Right. Okay, so we're going to move on to the next one quickly. So the next one is going to be that ground over there, which has got the leaves and that on. Also relatively simple to do. It looks complicated, but believe me, it's not. <laughs> so first we start off with the ground, because that is underneath, okay? So we're going to take a bit of charcoal, and you can just do a small section here. We're not going to do a massive section. Just take your willow charcoal. Mine's decided it's not going to work today. I bought some cheaper one, and it's not a good idea. So also don't buy very, very cheap willow charcoal, guys. It doesn't just going to irritate you. <laughs> so I'm going to create the ground that it's on. Okay, so that ground part, I'm going to literally just use the side of the charcoal. I'm just going to add some ground like so. And also leaving a little bit of white in between, as you can see, because the ground is rough. Um, I don't want it to be smooth. If you want it to be smooth, you can, but you're going to lose some of the texture. So if you want a smooth ground, then you would obviously just make this very smooth, like sand almost. Okay. But I don't want it to be smooth. All right. And I'm going to bring in some of those leaves that I see. So I'm just going to use the, um, the hard eraser. 
And I'm going to basically draw in some of those leaves now. I'm just going to erase some of those leaves there. Right. And just also take, I'm just going to put like two or three in. I'm not going to put all of them in. Um, and remember, some of the leaves are a little bit darker than other ones. So you can change the, the different, you know, the different aspects of the leaf. You can put them in different places. You don't have to copy the picture exactly. So I'm just going to put some, I'm going to put like three, I'm going to put like five leaves in. Okay. Different shape, maybe, and just give them a bit different angle. So I'm just going to put my leaves like that. I've got my leaves. Remember, you can also use, if you've got the pencil, you can use the eraser pencil to do the leaves as well. Always think about the tools that you have. Which one's going to work the best for you? Right, so never be scared to, to try different tools. I mean, you could even, yeah, I mean, you could even use um, one of your blending tools if, you, if it takes off enough of it. Okay. Then I'm going to use the eraser with a sharp edge. So here I've given myself a nice sharp edge again. You can see properly there. And now I'm going to bring in those bits of grass. So I'm going to, and I'm going to wipe in between each one. So I'm going to just crisscross, wipe, crisscross, wipe. And I'm just going to crisscross them here. And I'm not even looking at the picture anymore. I'm just going to bring in some grass here. Be careful that you don't do what I've just done there, that you 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 pull and drag at the same time because then it just becomes this um, like mess. So try and keep it as quick as possible. Wipe. I'm wiping each time. And you can put on as much grass as you want. You can do, and maybe you can go back into your leaves afterwards as well. You can bring your leaves back in. So the other way you can do this is you can actually go and do your, your grass first and your leaves on top. That's up to you. You can do it either way. It just depends on how much you have lying there. So I'm just trying to get my reference back again. Look, there you go. Okay, so I've got the different pieces of grass here. All right, and now I'm going to go back into it and I'm just going to give it a little bit of shadow. All right, so nothing will ever lie on the ground and it doesn't have a shadow underneath it. So you can leave it like that if it works for you. If you look at your picture and you say, cool, it's working for me. I'm going to leave it just like that. Or you can go back into it again and then you can add a little shadow. I'm just going to make that leaf a bit whiter again. So if you have gone over your leaves and you want to just recreate them again, and then I'm just going to, yeah, you can use your charcoal pencil if you want to, okay? Otherwise, you just use a small piece of willow charcoal and you just go underneath the leaves. So where they touch the ground, you're going to give it a bit of a shadow. Just a slight shadow. It doesn't have to go all the way around. So if your light is, say, coming from this side here, then obviously your shadow is only going to be on that side over there. It's not going to go all the way to the one side, okay? And then you can actually do the same with the grass. You can add a few shadows underneath your grass. That will just give it more of a 3D effect. If you guys want me to send this video to you afterwards, um, just let me know. I'll just send it via Skype. If you want to, I'll go over it again. Okay. That would be great. Thanks, Sharon. Yeah, well, because I have, I, I'm busy recording it um, via Skype this time, not through that other thing, because that's just... Um, it's so huge. The other way I did it, so yeah, I will send you that thing today. So I promise. Okay. Thank Annette, you. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I finally got my computer part yesterday. I ordered it two weeks ago. It's a, what they call a solid state hard drive. I had to open up my whole computer yesterday, my laptop, oh. should I say, and I had to upgrade my laptop because I was really battling to do the editing. Um, uh, it, it kept on lagging and crashing and everything. So. I have now, I've got a very fast computer and I'm so chuffed with myself so long. <laughs> it's brilliant. I had mine done a few months ago and I'm so impressed because there's nothing else wrong with mine. It just yeah. needed this extra, this uh, uh, rebooted hard drive. Yes, it's the same. It's, it's what they call a solid state hard drive, yeah. So I got the part yesterday, I opened the whole laptop, plugged it, put it in and then, yeah, I managed to actually get it to work properly. So I'm just, I'm really so excited this morning when I switched it on. Because you've got to clone, oh no, you've got to clone Windows and other words. It's quite a mission. 
but believe me, it was worth all the time. <laughs> so yeah. Okay. And then again, so what I'm doing here is I'm actually just bringing in a little bit of the um, sort of little darker textures into the into the ground as well. So you can do that as well. So you can really have a lot of fun with this here. For me, this is a wonderful way to play around with textures. Recreating smoother textures, uh, harder textures, and just bringing in darker areas there. So there I've got my, my leaves on my ground with a little bit of, uh, it looks like a eucalyptus. <laughs> so that's that one. Yeah, I'll take a photo quickly. Send it to you guys. Sharon, can I send you mine? Because I actually can't believe I've actually done a half decent job on that particular one. Awesome. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> you guys are so much in the Thank you. Sorry, ladies, you're all going to see it now. <laughs> no. Oh, wow. That's awesome. I love that. That's brilliant. Absolutely perfect. You see, it doesn't oh. take so much effort to recreate what looks like a complicated thing. You know, um, and that's what people are always afraid of when I send these pictures, like, oh, it's so complicated, but it's not actually. If you just do it the right way and you know yeah. how to work the material that you've got, you can you can do it. It's really not that difficult, you know, but that's awesome. Well done. Awesome. Thank you. Cool. There's a leaf, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see that. <laughs> cool. Okay. All right. So now we're going to go into the water. So I just want you to do that sort of. Okay. So there's two ways you can do this. Let me just show you the first way before we go into that one. Um, so you can either do it this way, where you would make a grey surface, um, just by picking up some of your willow charcoal. Let's just do it. Okay, so just grab up some, some of your charcoal on your little ball there and just create the surface quickly, like that. This is one way to do it. And now you're going to use your um, hardy razor with the with that fine edge. So if you can look at the picture, you'll see that the further away it is, everything's smaller the further away it is. Okay. So the lines in front will be a bit thicker, and the ones that are on the horizon will actually be a lot smaller. Okay. So you're going to start off with small lines, always going horizontal. Be very careful um, that you don't bend your your lines so i want you to keep your lines straight okay so and you're going to basically make little marks like that all right so you're just going to initially do fine little marks they'll be closest together almost what we call hatching okay so there we're going to basically hatch the horizon line there's not going to be much showing through but i do want there to be a little bit of um, of the grey showing through. All right, we don't want it to be a solid white because it's not. Okay. And you can always use like a zigzaggy emotion if you want to. Just don't make it a solid zigzag. All right. So just, uh, this is relatively smooth, this water. The only time we would actually make it go further up or give it more of an angle is if the water becomes a bit rougher. Okay. So in actual fact, I'm just going to halve this here. So this is going to be the, the, the quieter water. Now, as I get to come closer, the gaps are going to get a little bit bigger and the lines will be a little bit thicker as well. Okay, and there you can again bring some more of a zigzaggy feel in there like that. So you can see that the further away it is, the finer the lines are. So I'm using the edge and it's far away near the horizon. And as I come closer and closer, then I'm going to make my lines a bit thicker because I can see them better. I can actually see those those gaps there. And you can use that just as your water, just as it is. And if you want to, you can bring in your darks as well. So um, you have to just play around with this and to, to get the effect that you want. Then what you can do is you can go into this now and bring in some of the darker sections. So often it'll be just below the little ridge. So it'll just be low, it'll be, the, the, the dark will be just below the the white, not above it, it'll be below it. Because remember the sun is normally shining from the top. So it's, it's sort of creating a very slight shadow. Then you can go underneath the whites, wherever you want them to be, you don't have to go with them everywhere. And then you will go in with your, 
paintbrush and you will soften that if you want to soften it. Okay, so then I'll go in with the paintbrush afterwards. And you can have different size paintbrushes. So you can have a, a big paintbrush, bigger surface, you can have a small paint, and you can have a tiny, teeny paintbrush if you want to as well. So you want to then soften that and you just soften that into your things without going into the white if possible, just to give it that sort of effect there, like so. Okay, so that's that's about the easiest way to do your, your water. It's not perfect, obviously. Um, we are a bit short of time today, so I'm just going to, but you can fiddle with that, get it to get the feel that you want. You can have bigger um, sort of round sections, as you can see in the photograph there. If you want your water to be rougher, then you can go and literally give it more of a sea feel by making almost like a triangular type of shape. Okay. And, but what I would suggest you do then is you overlap them to give it sort of the rougher feel. Okay. So you give the, the, the water a slight angle. You can make, you can also do zigzags. You can just do zigzags as well. And that'll be your rougher water. I'm not going to do, um, I'm not going to do C, proper C, okay, because that's quite time consuming. So I'm not going to worry about that now. But then you can see I've immediately got a rougher sort of surface. Um, you can see the water is definitely a bit moving around a bit more, should I say. And then there you, again, you can actually just bring in a few shadows here and there just to show that there is, remember below the white. And you can see that immediately you've got a rougher seam. And there again, you just go in with your paintbrush. But that's only if you're doing a, a rough sea with a boat or something like that. Of it. So I don't do a lot of water. And then if you want to, and you feel you need to bring in some more highlights or whatever it is, then you can go back into it with your eraser again. The same with this one as well, okay. You can also go back into it and, and just bring some more texture into it. And you can actually play around quite a bit. You can give it a lot more texture if you want to. Okay, so that's your water. The other way you can do water quickly, I'm just going to show you one other way you can do water. You can leave your paper white, okay? And then you just go in with your charcoal. Remember, finer lines, and you're going to use your paintbrush after this. You're going to draw finer lines. Here, you're going to now leave the white behind. So it's the other way around. You're basically just working in the opposite direction, okay? So here, you're going to do the same thing. As you come closer, you're going to leave the gaps a bit wider. So this is leaving the white behind as it gets further away. And this also depends on... Is your light getting lighter towards the back or is it getting darker? So that's another consideration you have to take in when you're looking at your reference, okay? Um, with this particular one, it was lighter, but here I'm going to make this darker. So I'm going to now go into it with the very tip of paintbrush. And I'm going to just bring in my water and I'm going to make it a bit darker there. And obviously, if there's a shadow, so say you've got a, a mountain in the background over here, it's going to have a shadow um, below, so it's going to cast a reflection. So wherever your reflections are, just remember that you're going to, so say I've got a tree here like this, okay. The reflection will also, but it'll also still the same, it'll also be in, in vertical lines, okay. So... The reflection is going to show that you're on water. You're not going to create a, um, a solid round reflection like that. You're going to still keep the same effect that you have with water here. Okay, so there's your reflected water. So your water will always have zigzags to it. This is quite a small area, so you're going to have to just... Um, Bring in a few more. Okay. But you bring it in until you get the feeling that you want. 
And then, of course, again, you can go back into it with the eraser and create more of a watery effect. Fine tune it. Okay. All right. Um, okay, so we're just going to quickly do the cloud. You guys good for time? Can I go on for another 10 minutes, 15 minutes? Is that okay? Thanks, Sharon. I'll, I may just leave in about five minutes, if that's okay. okay. Yeah, I should be able to. I should be done in five minutes. So. Don't rush. I'll, I'll, yeah, um, look, the, the grass, the grass one I'm not going to do because the grass one, in hindsight, it actually is very really much like this. So creating the grass is exactly the same way as this. Um, I just want to show you the clouds quickly. The clouds actually really easy to do. So the cloud again. If you want a blue sky, okay, so if you don't want, this one has got like a, almost like a blue sky in the background. What you're going to do is you're going to create your blue sky first. Okay. Um, some people don't want to create a blue sky. They're just going to uh, put the cars directly onto the paper. So I'm just going to give a go. And you literally just go in with your needle wool eraser here. And you, you create your nice white fluffy cloud with its edges. And you, you use your needle wool eraser here because you, um, if you look at a cloud, it's slightly darker at the bottom and it's whiter at the top. And you want to be able to get that transition nicely here. So I'm literally getting the top of the clouds here nice and white. And I'm using a little ball around motion again, okay, like I did before when I was doing the background of those trees. Because the clouds are made of circular sort of forms, if you want to put it that way, then I'm going to use that, okay. And then as I go further down to the bottom, I'm not going to make them quite so white. And if you want your clouds softer, you can make them softer. See, there's immediately a cloud. I mean, the cloud is probably one of the easiest things to do, actually. So um, you would then go into the bottom with it. You can take your paintbrush and just make the cloud slightly darker at the bottom, if you want to. So if you want to make it a little bit slightly me a cloud, then you go into it with your paintbrush here, because you want your clouds to stay soft. So you're just giving your clouds a very soft feel. Giving it a bit of a base. Like so. And voila, you have a cloud. <laughs> you can obviously make big fluffy clouds. You would do them exactly the same way. Um, you can if you want to. If you don't want to have a, a, a background as a sky, that there's actually a, a sky in the background, you want it to be white, then you would literally create your clouds with your um, ball as in you would literally just create clouds like this. I'm talking about now storm clouds, more like storm clouds. But there again, you must remember that they will be darker at the bottom. And also using the circular motion up some of my thing depends on obviously how big it is on your pictures uh, you might need to use a small little ball or you might want to use a um, you can use your yeah you, know, you can sort of use your blending stump you'd have to just play around with your tools but that's more of a, a sort of a stormy sky and then you could bring in some of the highlights of the clouds afterwards you can then bring in some highlights onto your cloud. So this is now bringing whites back into this. And then I would use my eraser, oh, sorry, the, the paintbrush. And now I'm also using a little round ball effect, as I said before, just bringing in that. I'm going to use a paintbrush to soften it. Making sure my paintbrush is clean and just softening it. So keeping the whites at the top and then sort of just bringing the darks up into the white a little bit just to soften the edge. I don't want to get rid of the whites. I want the whites to stay behind there. 
adjusted. And now you've got more storm clouds and then you can go back into those again and then you can add some more darker sections if you want to. So you'd have to look at your reference as well. So this one, this one I'm doing out of my head basically. Um, but there would be obviously darker sections where you want your clouds to be a little bit darker. But that's more of your storm clouds, okay. Stand out a bit more. And then you just play around with all the different tonalities. So those are your two ways of doing clouds. Okay. Um, yeah, any questions? Is that okay with the clouds with regards to the clouds? <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, and it's quick. It's actually so quick. It's so easy to do because it's so soft. The big thing is, I remember, it, you know, like these are all textured. This is all textured. Water is relatively soft. Use a paintbrush. There is my background is soft. I use the paintbrush. So here I use the paintbrush. Here I didn't really use the paintbrush except where I wanted it to be soft. Okay. So those are your different ways of, of creating. I'm going to just quickly do the grass. It will literally take me two minutes to do just to show you. So with regards to that grass that I've got there, I'm going to take my charcoal and I'm just going to give sort of almost like sections of grass. Okay, I'm not copying the reference. I'm just sort of basically putting darker and lighter areas like that. I don't want a big solid area like that. Okay, because this grass is actually going up. It's not lying flat. Okay, so I'm, I'm sort of giving it a bit of a vertical um, section. So I'm basically bringing in, so I've already got vertical lines going up, but little short ones, okay? Then I'm going to go in with my eraser. The, the hard eraser with a sharp edge, and I'm going to now, also cleaning in between, I'm going to start bringing my grass in on top of this. Just short pieces, so what I normally do is I normally start at the top here, and then work my way forward because the ones in the front are obviously in front and they lay themselves on top of the ones at the back. And the ones at the back, you can make it a little bit shorter. So this is not very specific grass. As you can see in that reference, it isn't very specific grass. It's just an area that you want to show is slightly grassy, but you don't want to have to bring in every single blade of grass it will drive you nuts and you can see why i left the gaps in between that's just to create some darker and lighter effects in between the grass because it has got shadows it's got areas where it's more clumpy areas that are a little bit more detailed and what i've done here as well is i'm changing the the angles so i'm not making them all go up in one direction i'm sort of going like grass does you know it goes in different directions I mean, you can even have pieces that are going at an angle over some of the others. You can do that as well. You can have longer pieces, shorter pieces, etc. So there's a whole grassy section immediately done. And if you really want to make some of the, the, the areas a little bit darker, then you would go back in with your willow charcoal and very carefully bring in, also using vertical lines, go make some darker sections. And then if it goes too dark, then you can just go into it with your eraser again. But always keeping in mind that these stems are vertical, so everything will be drawn vertically, okay? It's only if you've got a flat surface going horizontal like your water, then you will work with horizontal lines. Always keep that in mind. I'm busy sketching. There, I've got some darker sections. And now if I wanted to put some ground here, my ground is actually horizontal. So I would do some ground going horizontally. And that immediately gives it a bit of a different feel. Now you can see it's sitting on some ground. And it's exactly the same as we do this with the pen and ink as well. Um, yeah, you could almost take some of the pen and ink rules into this as well with the vertical lines and horizontal lines. There I've got some ground that I've put in, but my ground is horizontal. It's lying flat, so therefore I'm making it flat. Okay, and there again, I can go back into it again, and I can either use my eraser, or I can use, if I want it to be soft, 
if I don't want it to be hard like that, I can make it soft. I can make my round soft with the paintbrush and give it a soft feel. Or if I want to keep it rough, then I would leave it rough like that. Okay. Um, I can go back into it. I can make it rougher again. I can add some roughness to it. So here again, you can play around your tonalities. If you want a smoother surface, you literally make it smoother by taking your paintbrush, making it smooth, also using your horizontal lines and then going back into it and giving it more of a finished feel there. Okay. So you've got two different feelings there. There is, is rough, very rough with, with a lot of white showing through. But remember where your grass meets the ground as well, it will always be quite dark because um, it's usually shadowed. All right. So where it touches the ground, it will always be a little bit shadowed there. It will never be white where it touches the ground. Okay. So always make sure your grass is touching the ground. Okay. And if I wanted to bring one last little detail, if I wanted to bring a stone in or something like that, I could literally do a stone with my eraser pencil, bring one or two stones in there, and then just give each of my stones a bit of a shadow underneath it. So that's, that's a little detail you can add in if you want to, if you have any stones in your pictures. Add a bit of a texture. Okay, that's it, basically. <laughs> All right, so yeah, guys, um, I'm going to send you the photo of the clouds quickly. Just sorry, I'm going to just go in front of the camera here. Oh, my goodness me. Go and uh, there, just so you can get a better idea of that. Okay, guys, um, yeah, I hope that was helpful. <laughs> Well, that's much everything, more than likely. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, 